tired of having a pigsty instead of an office? I can show you how to go from this to this in 11 easy steps at a fraction of the cost of purchasing a wall unit. The tools you'll need for this project are a tape measure and square, a drill with drilling and driving bits, a circular saw unless you have your boards cut at the lumber yard, a sander, I used both a belt and orbital sander, a level, a hammer, a chain and nail set would come in handy. The supplies you'll need for this project are two 12 foot 2 by 12s, one 8 foot 2 by 12, eight 1 inch end caps, eight 4 inch nipples, eight 12 inch nipples, 24 1 inch floor flanges, three quarter inch wood screws, stain, finish, and either a little maturity or a sense of humor because <coughs> nipples. Step one, measure and design. My first step was to measure the total width of this room and found that it was 137 and a half inches wide. I then measured between the wall and the window. On each side, there were 39 and a half inches. The height measurements were next and I found that the wainscoting is 62 inches high and there are 22 inches between the floor and the bottom of the window. I wanted to give myself a couple of inches between the wall and the shelving unit on each side, as well as some room for taller decorations on the top shelf. So I designed this unit to be 133 and a half inches wide, with a second shelf coming in at a height of 19 inches, just below the window. The top two shelves should come in at a height of 36 inches and a width of 35 and a half inches, this will give a couple of inches between the shelf and the wall, as well as the shelf and the window. Step two, let's cut some boards. I started by cutting the top two shelves. I used the eight foot long two by 12, measured 35 and a half inches, marked it with my speed square, and cut with a circular saw. I did this twice, then moved on to my bottom shelves. Here, I followed the same steps with the 12 foot two by 12s but measured 133 and a half inches before cutting. Remember, if you don't have a circular saw or don't feel like cutting, you can always have the nice folks at your lumber yard pre-cut the boards for you. Step three, it's time to sand. My goal here was to make these boards look worn and used. So I spent a lot of time with my belt sander working to round the corners and edges. Once I was satisfied with each shelf, I followed it up with some 80 grit sandpaper on my orbital sander. Step four, whip it. Whip it into shape, shape it up. Step five, sand it again. After I beat these boards up a bit with the hammer chain and nail set, I went over everything one last time with 120 grit sandpaper on the orbital sander so that all the boards were nice and smooth. Step six, time to stain and finish. out of the gutter. I found this method for cleaning and protecting these iron pipe fittings on the Homemade Modern YouTube channel. I'll put a link in the description below. The first step is to get the stickers off. 
To do this, spray them with Goo Gone and scrape them off with a utility knife. Step two is to clean all of the black stuff in Goo Gone by wiping each piece with mineral spirits on a soft cloth. Seriously, people, can I not take you anywhere? After all pieces are thoroughly cleaned, it's time to protect. This step requires applying Minwax Paste Finishing Wax with a cheesecloth. Dry time is about 15 minutes. Then wipe it down once more with a soft cloth. Step eight, it's time to drill some pilot holes. After labeling the tops and bottoms of each shelf, I began measuring, marking, and drilling holes in the top two shorter shelves. These two shelves will each have two flanges on the bottom. I marked center on each end, placed a flange one eighth of an inch from the edge, and marked each hole in the flange. When it was time to drill, I placed a piece of tape three quarters of an inch down the drill bit as a guide for drilling depth. Once the top shelves were done, it was time to move on to the middle shelf. The top and bottom of the middle shelf have four flanges each, arranged identically, as seen here. I followed the same process for this shelf as I did for the first two, measuring center, marking flange holes at one eighth of an inch from each end of the board, and drilling the holes. The main difference here is I also placed flanges 35 and 3 eighths of an inch from each end of the board, marked flange holes, and drilled. On to the bottom shelf. The top of the bottom shelf is just like the middle shelf we just did. The bottom of the bottom shelf is slightly more complex. It has eight flanges placed as seen here. For the bottom of this bottom shelf, in each corner I placed a flange both an eighth of an inch from the end and the side of the board then followed the same protocol of marking and drilling pilot holes. The last holes to drill are for the middle four flanges on the bottom of the bottom shelf. For these, I measured and placed a flange 35 and 3 eighths of an inch from each end of the board, as well as 1 eighth of an inch from each side of the board, before marking and drilling pilot holes. Step nine, let's put this thing together. I like to work from the bottom up. So the first thing I did was attach the flanges to the bottom of the bottom shelf with three quarter inch wood screws. For each flange, I partially drove each screw in before tightening them all. Once the flanges were in place, I attached the end caps to the four inch nipples, then screwed the other end of the nipple into the flange. These will be the legs. Once all the legs were in place, I added felt pads to the bottom of each to protect my wood floors, then attached the top flanges and leveled it. The leveling process can take patience, but the threading on the legs makes it easy. Just wiggle it around and adjust leg heights until all feet are flat on the floor. Once the bottom shelf was leveled, it was time to bring it in. After placing it, I twisted a 12 inch nipple into each flange on the top of the shelf, then screwed in a flange at the top of each nipple. Now it's time to bring in the second shelf and place it on top of the flanges. Be careful not to hit the wall. Not that I did, just you be careful. A couple of things to note. Number one, there's an easier way to do this, and you'll see what I mean when I put on the top shelves. Number two, working on your back is exhausting. Glad I got smart on the top shelves. Once the shelf was in place, I adjusted the flanges to line up with my pilot holes and attached the shelf with three quarter inch wood screws. Now it's time for the top shelves. Here I decided that I was done flopping around on the ground. So I attached two flanges to the bottom of each of the top shelves, screwed a 12 inch nipple into each and added a flange to the other end of the nipple. Then flipped it right side up to attach it to the second shelf. Here I lined up the pilot holes with the flanges and attached with three quarter inch wood screws. Step 10. Organize and decorate.
Step 11, celebrate with a silent disco because this project is complete.